This video I want to go over the top four shooting angles that I aim for when I go out to shoot cyclocross events. These are the uh, top four things that I try to look for when I go out shooting cyclocross events. Um, I affectionately call this the agony folder and what it depicts is the the look on the cyclocross or bike racers faces um, and their level of effort that they're putting into the actual uh, event. Um, and I try to, you know, get in close to their faces and, and uh, get that sort of emotion and the uh, the fatigue and the tiredness or the mud or the dirt or, you know, just their general kind of feeling that they're uh, they're doing uh, while they're racing or even before the race or even after the race, depending on the uh, the conditions. I always try to, you know, get some cool course features as well, whether it's the mud, the sand, the tape, the you know, the course itself, um, how it's laid out, um, trying to add some sort of drama to it. Um, I try to get some low wide angle uh, shots as well, a little bit more dramatic. I usually use my, you know, 10 to 20 mil uh, lens for the stuff like that. The thing with these kinds of shots um, is you need to kind of be quite close to the action. So as long as you can kind of get, you know, quote unquote, inside the tape, uh, these ones work quite well. And then of course, panning stuff. So, um, and that's, you know, you got to sort of look for the right spots on the course to kind of get that thing. Um, I usually try to aim for like a 35 to 50 millimeter uh, when I'm shooting that, um, just to kind of get a little bit further away from the action, enough to kind of bring in the uh, the background, just so you can kind of get more of a, uh, uh, a blur to your shots. So let's go over some of these and uh, kind of scroll through them. And I've just kind of gone through all my, you know, races that I've covered the last uh, year or so and uh, sort of show you what I mean by what I call the agony. And you can, I mean, you can just say this, you know, emotion, faces, whatever you want to call it, right? So, um, so double click on one of these, and this is a good example, you know, good sort of out of focus, there's a little mud splatter here that's flying up in the air, but, uh, you know, this guy's like totally concentrating on what he's doing. He's isolated from the background, uh, kind of adds a little bit more emotion and depth to it. Scroll through them, same thing on this one here. This is uh, totally focused, again, isolated from the background, kind of showcases the rider himself and his face, and he's kind of like scowling, and he's like, oh, you know, why am I out here? But, you know, that kind of thing. Same thing with this. Um, <clears throat> you know, this guy's cool glove here. This was during something called the uh, the pumpkin cross, which people kind of dress up for and whatnot. Um, but yeah, he's uh, looks like he's had better days, uh, but he's putting in kind of maximum effort. Um, things like this, uh, cyclocross races, if anybody's familiar with them, generally speaking, they, uh, have a little bit more levity to them. Uh, there's usually hecklers and people handing out hand ups and whether it's drinks, whether it's, uh, you know, snacks or gummy bears or whatever, right? There's always somebody on the side of the course doing that. Um, so this type of stuff is also good to kind of get when you're covering cyclocross races because it adds to the depth and the emotion, uh, to the race, um, which is kind of fun. So more sort of showing the uh, isolated uh, shallow depth of field type shots of, uh, of uh, racers uh, isolated against background showing the effort in the face uh, again this is you'll see kind of why I call this the agony folder because <laughs> the faces that they give it's great this guy's like yeah I think he was actually leading the race at this point this guy um, some good kind of emotion kind of good depth navigating corners uh, getting chased down like this guy here he's, he knows he's there this guy knows he's there for sure and he's like I'm not gonna let you pass me but uh, yeah you know kind of good detail in the face there uh, this one here you know starting the run up you know she's like I'm gonna beat you up this hill and he's like there's no way you're gonna beat me up that hill um, this is our uh, local Cyclocross national champion Michael Vandenham racing in one of our local races. This was great. I think he ended up winning that one. Uh, yeah, some more. You could sort of change them to monochromatic or black and white to kind of add a little bit more emotion to the photo. But yeah, he's like total concentration in the eyes. And uh, again, you know, adding some levity to it. You know, and the racers know there's a camera there. There's lo always lots of photographers out shooting this kind of stuff. Um, you know, they'll sometimes ham it up for the camera. Right? Again, intensity, focus, you know, getting it done kind of thing. Uh, I love this photo. I mean, she's just, I mean, you can just see it. It's just, uh, yeah, she's putting in maximum effort. She's just, 
letting it all out there and uh, head down eyes closed just get me through this kind of thing uh, some more you know good focus good effort you know again anything that kind of shows the effort that these racers are kind of putting themselves through this guy and he knows these guys are chasing him down and he's just putting in maximum on that this is a good one again good sort of black and white but you can kind of see the leading line here these guys chasing him down he knows it's coming same thing on this <clears throat> this is a good shot as well it kind of shows you the crowd uh, shows you the effort of the cyclists as they're running over the barriers here this girl's getting a shot which is great this is a good shot as well head down just sort of putting in maximum effort again you know maximum effort kind of thing effort this guy's having a good time same thing on that yeah so there's some uh, good examples of what to shoot when you're shooting cyclocross as far as getting that emotion out of the cyclocross racers as opposed to just sort of standard kind of wide angle get everybody in the shot kind of thing you want to you want to show the emotion of the race you want to show the cyclists of the race you want to show what they're going through uh, it always makes for really good uh, good sort of sports portrait photography i guess if you want to call it that and you know for grassroots type races and you put this stuff up on your instagram and you get uh, people following you uh, from your area that were maybe in the race they like these things they like these photos you know um you know professional grade photos of them doing their thing you know they're weekend warriors a lot of these guys and they just you know grassroots uh, cycling and and they appreciate good quality photos of, them, of themselves doing their thing um, go to the next uh, folder so yeah uh, of course features and of course you can I try to kind of get, you know, the mud, the sand, the, the, the course itself to kind of show people the uh, the drama of uh, cyclocross racing. Um, again, you get so sort of that close up, high shutter speed, get that sand spraying up, that kind of stuff, you know. And uh, it really accentuates the, the, again, the course features or the course itself. Um, I think I've got this one up on my Etsy shop. Uh, it's a good shot. I like this one. This was done a few years ago. And then of course, features again, things like the barriers jumping over, spectators like, oh yeah, woo, yeah, she's doing great. That kind of thing. Uh, shows you sort of where people are coming from, some of the stuff they're running over, some of the mud, some of the corners. For a course features type thing, you kind of want to, I guess, accentuate or highlight what the course is all about. You know, if the course offers up particular spots like a sand pit or you know heavy mud or rain or you know things like that or hills or run-ups things like that that's kind of what you want to feature uh, in your photography for cyclocross things like mud this was just brutal this it was like in a little dip in the course and i guess just all the water pooled down here and it was just ankle deep gross um yeah jumping over barriers and stuff like that um again anything to kind of show the course <clears throat> Some good racing action here. This run up, you know, get down low, you know, get the foreground out of focus, sort of show that run up, show the people down at the bottom of the hill to kind of give that kind of uh, impression of the uh, steepness or the hill, any kind of drop offs, you know, things that kind of accentuate. You know, again, this is another angle from that same run up. It was really, really steep, really long. Um, and uh, yeah, by the time people got to the top of it, they were kind of wiped. But yeah, stuff like this to kind of show, you know, and if you can kind of get some cool sun rays coming through, that's always a bonus. Put it in black and white to make it look a little more dramatic. Again, run-ups to kind of show the, uh, for this type of stuff, you kind of want to get, you know, there's enough of a, a, a wide angle to kind of show the depth of what's going on um, from the bottom, say, to the top in this run-up. So, you know, if it was just a close-up of her, you wouldn't understand the effort that's going into this, right? So you kind of want to make sure you do that again. Low angles, showing the run up. You can see down at the bottom, out of focus there. He's putting in the effort to kind of get up there. Another run up shot there. Sometimes you got to push it. So yeah, again, low angle. Show this person way down at the bottom here to kind of give that perspective of exactly what this run up is all about, or this uh, feature of the course kind of thing. Again, drop offs, navigating around that corner it was brutal I mean there was so many people that fell right here I think one guy broke his collarbone right here during this race felt really bad for him 
Uh, continued on, actually. But, uh, yeah. I saw him in the medical tent afterward, and he was hurting. But anyway, um, again, you know, stuff like that. Show the, uh, the drop-offs, the run-ups, the run-ups, the run-ups. Stairs, Belgian stairs. Those are always a big feature at a lot of cyclocross races. Um, you kind of want to show, you know, stuff like this, you know, afterwards, washing your bike off, some of the mud, that kind of stuff. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, yeah, things like... Uh, sand pits you know so drop off into this sand pit again <laughs> you know there's a lot of people waiting well, watching around this spot because there was some carnage that happened at this one but uh, yeah drop off into a sand pit high speed navigating sand corners um again you know showing off the course features you know sliding down the sand uh, just <laughs> railing it down the sand <laughs> she just going to hell bent for leather on this one it was great um the single speeders, man, I give them props. They will, uh, they'll go all out. Um, but yeah, things like this that kind of show the uh, the awesome course features and uh, the difficulty navigating it. Nice hill running up. Yeah, so there you go. That's some of the course features to get. Again, shh. if the course has mud, sand, hills, run-ups, whatever, go out of your way to kind of showcase those. Oh yeah, things like this. You know, again, people heckling, people like doing hand ups, stuff like that. You know, other photographers getting their shots, other local racers that are in their different categories. You know, the photographer, yeah, he's a funny guy. Um, yeah, stuff like that, showing like the uh, the barriers that they got to run up over, that kind of thing. So, yeah, course features, make sure you go out of your way to kind of showcase those. Low wide angle shots is what I'm talking about. Um, you know, put on your 10, 15, 20 mil, get down low, and get these cool wide angled shots. People coming around corners, you know, doing drop offs, you know, get down low. Again, I mean, when you're shooting with a wide angle lens, I mean, I was probably not more than, oh, geez, maybe like a foot away from, from him as he's coming by. So you got to be kind of on your game to make sure you're not getting in their way but uh, you still want to get that shot it's a little bit closer All right. again yeah there you go yeah these are what I would call I mean the tape is you know well above me here right so I'm definitely inside the tape for stuff like this um, you know panning low angle wide shots things like this adds a little bit of drama things like this doing the run-ups again I find that the, the wide angle shots work best if you're getting down low and shooting up it distorts things a bit it sort of accentuates you know things like this wheel and makes it really big versus the size of her but still I mean it makes for a really cool dramatic shot I find and got some other ones here low angle shots of like running around corners nice color in the shoes and socks the mud and the grass shooting up towards the uh, steps there yeah, so things like that low angle wide shots is kind of what you want to go for and panning shots I like panning shots panning shots are a challenge for sure um, you really got to kind of dial in your depending on the weather conditions your ISO your shutter speed your your f-stop all that kind of stuff I mean, for example let me just check the settings on this one here uh, what do we do F so 70 mil f8 100 and this is 100th of a second this was a pretty high speed uh, uh, shot here. Uh, these guys were coming pretty quick down here. It was almost like a sort of like this straightaway on the back straight, so shutter speed was pretty high on that. But uh, this is like a more in the woods kind of a thing. So to kind of give you an idea, so yeah, well, 100th, 50 mil, 3.5, ISO 400 because it was a little bit darker. All right, so I kind of had to bump that up a bit. Uh, let's see what else we got. Some of my oh, things like this. this is quite a ways away. This is like a 70 mil. So if I like the grass, the shrub, the grass, the road, the cyclists, the houses in the back. Kind of gives that nice depth to the shot. Sort of showcases him. This is kind of a slow shutter speed coming around a corner pan. All right, a little bit different. He's kind of blurry out of focus there. Not totally out of focus. Getting a little bit of movement in the wheels. She is something like that, but he's pretty much 
dialed in there, leg out, foot down, navigating around the corner, pretty high speed straight as well, this is heading into a corner over here which is probably why he had his foot out, but yeah, good focus there. This is a cool shot, kind of depth, uh, sort of showing the, uh, the depth of the course itself, a lot of switchbacks that kind of led up to this part here. So these guys are all kind of blurry and out of focus. He's in focus. Wheels are out of focus or sort of blurred. Showing the speed. Grass is kind of showing the speed. Markers. So yeah, something like that. These are kind of cool. If you can kind of get that depth, uh, depending on, again, uh, depending on the course. Um, if the course lends itself to shots like this that add more depth to it, into your panning shot, then go for it. More kind of high-speed corners here. And again, you want to kind of get stuff in the background that shows the speed that they're going at. Um, if it was just you know, no foliage, no nothing in the background, just a straight color, just a straight texture, you wouldn't really see that speed. But if you do have plants and trees and other cyclists and things in the background, you're going to get that, that sense of speed out of your panning shot. So make sure if you do sort of set out to do that, you look for spots on the course that are going to offer that uh, opportunity to get that shot. So scroll through that. There's a wide angle panning. I find these ones probably the most challenging because you're, you're, it's, yeah, it's just more difficult. Um, this one here, uh, I mean, if anybody has any uh, insight into it, uh, for sure. 10 mil F4 ISO 400, 1 125th 1 on that one. So, um, yeah, wide angle panning shots are a little bit weird because you're just getting so much in the shot. You can't really isolate anything. Um, you know, put your focus to, to spot focus. Uh, hopefully they'll be in the middle of the shot and uh, go for it from that point. But they're a little bit more difficult for sure. Um, yeah, and again, get stuff in the background there that kind of show the speed. Uh, let's see here. Another good sort of... This one was definitely a little bit further away. 170 mil. 130th of a second. ISO. 100 on that one. Um, again, this is from the Pumpkin Cross where they all dress up in costume. So, um, yeah, I think I'm standing in the middle of a field and this road, this back straight, was probably maybe I don't know, 100 meters away uh, from where I'm at. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, that was cool. I like that one. It's always a good spot to shoot from. This was at that super muddy, rainy race, so definitely a higher ISO on this one from what I remember. Uh, let's find it. Uh, yeah, ISO 6400 at 400 mil at 1 250th. It was so gross that day. It was dark and muddy and holy smokes. Yeah, that was a, that was a challenging day. Good effort on his face. A little bit of a pan there, not too, too much. But yeah, some good examples of some panning shots. Again, to uh, surmise it, if you're going out to shoot cyclocross, these are my top four. Get the faces, get the effort, get the agony, get the emotion, get all of that kind of stuff. Get some course features in there as well. The sand pits, the mud, the tape, the, the course itself. Put on your wide angle lens, get down low, shoot up a little bit. Uh, get those low wide angle shots and definitely some panning shots. Panning shots to show speed. Uh, effort, that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's uh, kind of my top four things that I aim for when I go to shoot cyclocross. Hopefully that helps you all, and uh, if it does, let me know in the comments. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button, and if you want to see more of this kind of stuff, just hit the subscribe button and the notifications, and it will let you know uh, whenever I put up a new video. In the meantime, get out there and shoot. I am hopefully going to wait for the weather to clear up so I can shoot some more of this type of stuff. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks!